So in episode one, we made a horse archer build that started with 14 looting. So we're getting tons of extra loot from soloing battles. There's also a new legendary bow that we're trying to pick up. And there are some thinkers in the comment section. We want to get the new legendary bow, but it's actually going to take us a bit longer than I originally had thought. And actually in this episode, we stumble across another legendary bow pretty accidentally as it so happens. What you're witnessing right now, by the way, is pretty much all we do for the first 35 days of this playthrough. We don't eat, we don't sleep. We just follow Leanna around waiting for her to give us our next quest, which is not something I recommend doing to a girl you want to marry IRL. You know, you got to give her some space. Maybe if we went off and did some leveling and came back stronger, she might have been more willing to give us some better quests. We did fight alongside her in a few really minor battles against some Sakaar Raiders, and I'm not sure if that was why we got two random relation just for talking to her again. This time we talked to her though, not only did we get that free two relation, we also got another letter quest. And after delivering that letter, we got another relation with her. Plus for doing the quest, if we talk to her again, we get another free two relation. Bringing us up to 10, and that's actually enough to marry her in this mod. We then had to wait around for quite a few days for King Aeolus to throw a random feast. And once he did, the wedding ceremony commenced. I'm not sure why he was shirtless here. You would think the king might have had some more appropriate attire for a wedding. The king's blatant display of disrespect was not going to be tolerated though. And I asked Leanna if she would support me in becoming the new king. She was not down for that, but if we let her be king, she would sever her ties with King Aeolus. Though she was technically the leader of the faction, I was the one now in charge because she would actually follow us now. She wouldn't before. Why is this important? you may ask. Well, Liana actually has the new legendary bow. She won't give it up though, as it were, until we have a hundred relation with her. The easiest way that I know to grind relation with other lords is to have them follow you around and you do battles with them. And we're about to do some pretty massive battles with Liana. First though, we're going to jack some of her really high tier troops, these ironclads from her garrison. We then proceed to encounter King Aeolus on the field. And I don't know if he realizes that me and Liana are together because first he was chasing me, then he decides to chase Liana, completely disregarding the fact that that me and Leanna's troops combined definitely have more power level than his troops. Despite the fact that he did outnumber us, Leanna has a bunch of elite troops. We charge in here with her Dread Knights and they just start owning. I could have fought this a lot better. You don't usually want your cavalry to charge first. I also stupidly keep her archers way too far back. I don't even think they're in range here. And I forget to send her elite horse archers in. Despite me playing this horribly though, look at that kill feed. We are not losing many units. I don't know what the king was thinking engaging us. We do end up capturing the guy. I I believe there's only a 30% chance of this happening, so that was pretty lucky. But then look at this loot. So we got this chess piece that we're obviously going to be using. Plus we got these boots that I believe gave us 11 more leg armor than the ones we were using. And then we got this helmet that around doubled our old helmet's head armor. With King Aeolus captured, our next goal is to take out Aeolus Castle. In order to do that, I wanted to go in with the max amount of troops that we could, so I gave Leanna over 21 of these ironclads. We actually ended up losing 26 of them in the last battle. I then jacked some more of her troops from the garrison. Mainly these Credison horse hunters are really good archers. And then I gave her over the rest of her ironclads and that actually capped off her party. We couldn't give her any more units. I was able to grab 45 more of these skilled huntsmen though. They're decent archers. Before we do head into Aeolus Castle, the last Cretus monarchy lord charges out at us. Maybe it was too dark for him to see that Leanna was nearby, but yeah, we not only outnumber his troops, we completely outclass them. And for some reason he decides to charge in on this battle and we just sit back and just completely obliterate him with our archers. This fight was an absolute bloodbath. The dude does keep his archers back and we ended up charging him with the cavalry and just annihilate him. In total, we only ended up losing six units. Five of them were Leanna's elite dread knights, but that's okay. After that little warm-up snack, it was onto the main course, Aeolus Castle, and I want to separate this siege out into four phases. Phase one, we just sat outside and picked off some of their archers. Most of their units retreated back into their main keep though. After picking off their archers from their outer walls. We don't want to charge into their main courtyard. I did an attempt on this before. That did not work. Instead in phase two, we wrap our army around to the east of the castle and we get our archers up on this hill. And from this hill, we are able to pick off some of their archers. I do think we end up wasting too many arrows here because in phase three, as we move behind their castle, they do this weird strategy where they slowly trickle out their troops to us. I'm not really sure why they were doing this. They don't end up losing enough troops to where they decide to full charge out at us. It seems like we were just in a position to where they were trying to readjust their troops and since they were maybe too clumped up that forced them to leave the castle i don't really know exactly what was going on there in phase four all of our archers are out of arrows so we do end up just full charging we have killed 272 of them though so there's only 63 left as we're charging in though we are kind of getting picked off by some of their archers they still have left up overall it's a really messy charge and we lose a lot of units that we could have probably just not lost if we would have backed off and re-sieged but i wasn't sure what the penalty for backing off a siege was in 
some mods, it's pretty severe. So yeah, we just bite the bullet as it were, and Leanna does end up losing a ton of troops. In total, she loses 104. Some really good troops were lost here. And yeah, we have no surgery skill right now, so we're getting a lot of troops killed rather than wounded. The aftermath of that though is we did get one relation with Leanna, and we asked her to give Aeolus Castle to us, which she did oblige, and we now own our own castle. We end up plundering the castle and sharing the spoils with Leanna, and that gives us a relation with her, but it was definitely not worth as not only do we lose honor, we lose 50 renown for plundering. As we've been doing these battles, we have been getting some XP at 21 strength. We're able to get up to 7 power draw. We just dump the rest of our attribute points into strength, and we get 1 in prisoner management and 1 in leadership. Because we now have a point in prisoner management, we can start jacking Leanna's prisoners, and we can sell them for ourselves. This ends up being pretty profitable, as at Colvera, there's a ransom broker who we can sell these prisoners to. These 13 assassins of Raul Dayun sell for 391 each, so we get a really nice profit here. And some of you may have noticed as we enter the tavern, there's actually a mystic merchant here. A cool trick with the mystic merchant is if you leave the tavern and come back in, he will reset his goods and he can have some really nice stuff. We get extremely lucky here as the third time we talk to him, we actually get the legendary sunrise ranger bow. In a playthrough before, I've tried gambling with this guy for hours and I've never seen this thing before. That being said though, I go full special mode here as I don't have any inventory space. Unfortunately though, without thinking, I go to the marketplace to sell off some goods and free up some inventory space, forgetting that leaving the tavern would reset the mystic merchant stock. A solid 20 minutes of resetting the tavern later, we run into the bow yet again. I did gamble for a few other things and we barely had enough money to pick it up, but we do end up getting one without a modifier. The whole thing with gambling with the mystic merchant is the gear you gamble for can have random modifiers. I'm not sure if this legendary bow can, but regardless, as I was backing out to save, the game ends up crashing. I'm not sure why the game decided to crash here. This was actually my first crash of the entire playthrough. I made the executive call to go into the cheat menu and to buy the bow from there. It still costed us the same amount it costed at the Mystic Merchant, it's just that since we had to reload our save, we lost some of the things we gambled for, resulting in us having some extra cash. With some of that money, we gambled for three horses, as the horse we were using got injured in a previous battle. And we're not able to ride two of these horses, but this heavy Draharan pony actually has a zero riding skill requirement, and the heavy modifier actually gave it three extra armor and ten more HP and a little bit of extra charge, so that was kind of lucky. This thing is definitely one of the better zero skill requirement mounts though. A bit later we were doing prisoner runs to Drahara and we ended up dumping off just one set of prisoners when Drahara actually declared war against us. Back at home I actually found out that our constable will sell all of our prisoners for us. I think we get a bit less of a profit here, but that's fine. We need all the money we can get so we can try to defend Aeolus Castle. First thing we need to do is build a blacksmith for 6.3k and that will refill our ranged troops ammo every minute. Outside Aeolus Castle there were also some deserters and there's a really cool feature in Prisno where you can hire deserters. If we tell them we have a proposition to make, we can pay them only 1443. That's pretty cheap for these units. One of them was this Tolranian headhunter horse archer, and eight of them are these Tolranian archers, and they have a pretty high weekly wage, so they're going to be decent. We dumped them off at Aeolus Castle's garrison, and as you can see, we moved all the princess's troops from her castle over to ours, and we're going to hope that's going to buy us some time so we can go out and do a few things. One of our main goals now is to grind some XP so we can get up to 10 power draws so we can use the legendary bow and I kind of messed up with this group of snow walkers only three of them were melee and it turns out the melee ones give more xp the rest of these guys are archers and I end up having to circle around them for a good five minutes to drain them out of arrows and yeah we can see here they only give 48 xp each it was really not worth for soloing this battle we do get quite a bit of loot but the buying price does not reflect the sell price at all well it might be partly due to the fact that our trade skill is so bad because yeah back at the nearby town we're only able to sell this stuff for 1500 we then leave Voldeberg and as we're heading over to the Reich's other nearby town Town, we run into this fat group of deserters that has three of these Virago heroines. From what I remember, these are some of the best troops in the game. Also, cool thing to note when hiring these guys, we do get all their prisoners as well. We only are able to carry 18, so we just pick up the snow walkers. And that was automatic. If I could have chosen, I would have taken their wolf troops. Because these troops were so good, hiring them did cost us 6.5k, but we did recoup some of that money as we were able to sell their 18 prisoners for 1500, which we promptly spent on these mercenary veteran crossbowmen. I thought these would be pretty helpful in a siege defense. That whole transaction was done at Merton Hall, and after we did that, we headed back home to Aeolus Castle, where we dumped off most of the troops we just picked up into their garrison. These three Virago heroines that we picked up have a weekly wage of 254. They're super good horse archers. We also got one of these Draken Dragoners. That's a really good cavalry. And four of these Draken Cavaliers. They're a lower tier version of the Draken Dragoners. And we got two Viragos, which are a lower tier version of the Virago heroines. We grabbed all the mounted units out of our garrison, and we headed back to these Snow Walkers, and we're going to farm them a bit more. 
anymore. These two groups actually have some really nice prisoners as far as I know. I'm not sure how they came by them. The idea here though with these battles is we're going to have all of our mounted units hold fire and we're actually going to keep the heroines back. I want to make sure those things survive. The Virago heroines are the female horse archers right there. I'm going to send our tankier cavalry in though just to draw arrow fire. They're going to distract while I shoot at these dudes. Right now I'm just trying to farm my main character XP. That's all I really care about right now because yeah I want to get up to 10 power draw. But yeah so here's what we're doing. We got the cavalry over there and the archers are just kind of shooting at them or I don't know what they're doing actually. They're just sitting there doing nothing. Unload here. Oh, nice headshot. Another nice headshot. And yeah, we finished them off. We actually only rescued two prisoners. These captured enemies were in their prisoner stack and were able to take them as prisoners. I guess enemy prisoners behave differently in this mod and we take their enemy prisoners as our prisoner instead of being able to hire them. We were only able to hire the soot giants. Maybe we're at war with the Volhir units. I'm not really sure how that works. And now we're gonna take out this other group of snow crawlers. They do have some Ilika units, which I believe we are at war with. So I don't think we're gonna be able to hire those. This is a cool battlefield. It's got a cool snowy aesthetic to it but yeah we already took out their melee units and i'm um, just picking apart their archers and yeah we were not able to recruit any of these illica units unfortunately i think they're pretty good but after doing that we did get a level up and we actually have two level ups we are up to 25 strength now which is going to get us up to eight power draw if we get two more level ups we can use the black ebony bow and that's going to be way better than the bow we're using right now and all right about a day later we got a bit of an unfortunate update so the entire jaharan army came over and took the princess's castle and they're now sieging aeolus castle maybe we should not have made the campaign ai good in this mod because yeah, they had, I think it was 2,400 troops versus we had around 400 total and things were actually going okay. Like we had a pretty good position here, but then eventually we ran out of arrows because our blacksmith has not been built yet and they just overwhelmed us. There was really nothing we could do. I don't actually know what would have happened if we would have lost this siege and it looks like we're never going to know because I think the game bugged here or I'm not sure what happened, but we couldn't leave the battle. But yeah, moral of the whole story is when you have campaign AI set to good and a faction declares war against you and you're not ready, just dip out of there and that's what we're going to do here. We grabbed our best troops from the garrison and we gave Leanna as many as we could. We end up giving her all of our high tier troops including like the Virago heroines and then we load up our party with the best stuff we can. We mainly grab all of the range units. Sometimes they say the best defense is a good offense and we go on the offensive here against Rahara and attack Selenseer Castle. At the start of this siege I get a bit worried as we actually are losing a ton of troops but our troops are not in formation yet and by formation I just mean we put our units that have shields in the front and the enemy archers will lock on to whatever is closest to them. The kill feed then just starts lighting up in our favor and it gets to a point where we're not even really losing any troops anymore. After clearing out most of their archers I noticed to the east a bit there is a hill and we can move our archers to the top of that hill and we're actually able to get a pretty good vantage point on a lot of their troops that are defending their choke point. We end up getting a crap load of kills this way and yeah needless to say this castle is one of the easier ones to attack. Oh uh, they're trying to charge out at us so we moved our archers back over to where we started and yeah they can't actually charge out because they'd have to jump to get over that wall thing. The reason why they're trying to charge out is because we've killed so many of them and after a certain point they try to charge and as you can see up here there's not many of them left. Alright we got 36 renown for that. We did rescue two prisoners. Got some loot. Nothing really that we need too much I think. We got a relation with Leanna though and we got a good amount of XP. We're up to level 11 now. Oh wow and we get five relation with Leanna if we give her over the castle even though she's a leader she can give it over to whoever she wants and we can take the units that were in the garrison so we actually probably ended up gaining more units than we lost there. We got nine ironclads those are really good units. Nine ironclads is definitely better than anything we lost. I'll take it and so yeah moving forward we found out a really good way to grind relation with Leanna so we can get that legendary bow. We'll be trying to do more of that in the next episode as well as we'll be grinding XP so we can use our other legendary bow that we have. If you are liking this drop a like in the comment the support in the last video is really good. I do thank you all for that and I will see you in the next one.